Well, good morning, Greg. I'm so glad to have this opportunity to talk with you. Um, for the folks that are listening to this, Greg Lyon is an assistant uh, teaching professor at Georgetown University, where he teaches classes not only for the McCourt School, but also for the McDonough School of Business. Um, he also does research on a wide range of really fascinating topics that um, I think are of interest to our community, including work on work and employment, on public policy, regulation, political behavior, health, and working conditions. Um, I'm really looking forward today to having an opportunity to talk with Greg about the experiences that informed his research interests. Um, he earned his PhD from Rutgers University before coming to Georgetown, and he was a postdoctoral fellow um, at Tufts University with a cooperative congressional election study and at the Tisch School for Civic Life. Before graduate school, he taught English in Honduras, and he also worked as a case manager in Philadelphia. And I'm hoping that we will have an opportunity to talk about those experiences today. So welcome, Greg. Thank you very much. It's really a pleasure to be here. I'm really happy to talk to you. It's great to have you um, join our community, even if it's virtual at this moment. I hope we'll be together on campus very soon. Absolutely. So you have published several papers on workers' rights and labor policy. Can you share a little more about your work and what inspired you to pursue that field of study? So I spent a lot of time um, working with a range of different people from different backgrounds. And when I got into graduate school uh, and I began studying the, the literature and political science and, and policy and things, um, I noticed there wasn't, there wasn't a lot of work on work. And so for me, it was kind of surprising because it was such a central part of uh, our day-to-day -day lives. And so it really kind of surprised me that there wasn't that much research or at least new research. There was some stuff back in the 70s and 80s. And so I really took it upon myself to push forward in the domain of work and employment um, and really try to speak to some current debates happening and some current debates in research. It sounds like fascinating work. Yeah. So you've spent a substantial amount of time um, on these topics, but also examining their intersection with data science since you came here to participate in our data science and public policy program in part. Um, can you talk a little bit about the intersection of data science and labor policy and civic engagement and how that experience informs your teaching at McCourt? I think that's one important component of data science is kind of using data visualization or different elements of data science to communicate what can be otherwise uh, somewhat complex ideas to a wider audience. So that's something that I really became interested in in graduate school early on was using the tools. I used R a lot and, and a little bit of Python and things like that, primarily R, to really explain to people who may not otherwise want to read the whole paper or understand all the details of the, of the research, but they can see this, this plot or this, this graph that you can produce you know, very, very nicely and they can kind of get the main picture and they can get the main piece and they may be then motivated to learn more about it. And so I think that's really a really it's a really important element that um, sometimes is lost in research, which is that last element of communication, um, using communication to uh, engage policy debates, so labor policy, which you mentioned, and also civic engagement. Um, because I think once people are interested in the topic, for example, labor policy, um, if they see an interesting graphic or something that was produced that was compelling to them, then they become engaged um, or they can become engaged. And so I think those three kind of components really converge nicely. And that's something I really hope to explore with McCourt students who are excellent and really engaged in policy debates and also data science in the um, Master's of Data Science for Public Policy program. So I think that that's, that's gonna be, you know, really core to, to my teaching. And, and I hope to really inspire students to use both the tools of data science and also to debate, you know, get, be engaged in these substantive policy debates. So oh, you have, you referenced early that you worked in many different sectors um, before and during graduate school and that that informed your research and that informs how, what you will bring to our students, obviously. Um, can you talk a little bit about professional development opportunities that our students are considering, like internships and jobs and what kind of career advice um, you have given, you would give them, or, or great career advice that you may have gotten along the way that you think really was useful? One is um, never rule anything out, um, you know, prematurely. Uh, opportunities are going to come up from time to time, and 
it may not seem like exactly what you've decided you want to do, but it may actually be something that you end up wanting to do in the future or learning a lot about that hones your perspective or, or furthers your perspective on a given area. Um, and so after four years of taking classes and working, um, I was working like two or three nights a week at a restaurant and taking six classes and extremely busy um, that I needed to I needed to stop for a second and kind of think and deliberate a little bit. And so um, that's when I decided to go down to Honduras and I found a teaching position teaching English in Honduras and I taught English there for a year um, and it was a wonderful experience. I learned Spanish and I um, was able to learn a lot about um, Honduran culture and, uh, and other countries down there. And then upon retur returning, I uh, became a caseworker um, and a bartender. So I was working in restaurants in Philadelphia as I moved back. So this, this relates to your nonlinear path of, um, you know, how you, how someone arrives at where they get to. And what um, kind of a caseworker, Greg? I was working with people with intellectual disabilities. You never know what you're going to experience, especially in internships and jobs through college and after college. All those experiences are really valuable and you can learn, or you can always learn something from somewhere, even if you don't particularly think that that's going to be your, your dream job or something like that. Is that. I think it's important to maintain curiosity and uh, a desire to learn in all the positions you, you engage in. So if it's an internship or something like that, that maybe you wanted some other field or some other industry, still maintain a, a strong desire to learn and you will find that you will probably enjoy it more than you think as you begin to learn the ins and outs. And then you take that knowledge with you into the future and it can be a really, you know, really valuable source of perspective and skills. I couldn't agree with you more. Um, <laughs> and, and I think the things that are, in some ways, the things that are nonlinear or seem like a little bit outside of scope are the ones that have the greatest potential for teaching you something that you don't know. And we're so pleased to have you um, join our school and our program. and. Um, I, I think our students are in for a treat um, in your classes. So thanks so much, Greg, for taking the time to talk with me today. Thank you very much. I really appreciate it. It was my pleasure, really.